Please note that in the YouTube description, we have links to Discord, Patreon, and the sources that I referenced to be able to make this video. James Clerk Maxwell was a 19th century Scottish mathematician and scientist. He made fundamental contributions to mathematical physics, most notably in the kinetic theory of gases, which accurately explained the origin of temperature and helped to develop the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, color photography, presenting the first ever color photograph in an 1861 presentation, Saturn's rings, which he mathematically proved over 100 years before the Voyager journey verified his theory, and electricity and magnetism, creating Maxwell's equations, which scientists called the second great unification of physics, unifying electricity, magnetism, and optics. Maxwell is regarded as the founder of modern electrical engineering, and his contributions laid the foundations for special relativity and quantum mechanics. Many physicists believe that he had the most influence on 20th century physics, and Einstein actually described Maxwell's work as the most profound and the most fruitful that physics has experienced since the time of Newton. Maxwell was born on July 13, 1831 in Edinburgh, Scotland. Shortly after his birth, him and his family moved to a countryside home in Glenlair, Cacudbrashire. His parents were John Clerk Maxwell and Francis Kay. Little seems to be known about Francis, but John was a lawyer that came from a wealthy family from Pennycook and added Maxwell to his name after inheriting an estate. The couple met in their 30s, Francis giving birth to Maxwell when she was almost 40, and he was their second attempt at having a child. Their first child, Elizabeth, died in infancy. Maxwell was raised a Christian, attending both Calvinist Presbyterian and Episcopalian services due to his parents' respective denominations, and he converted to evangelical faith later in his life. Maxwell's early education began at home, primarily being taught by his mother. He was noted as being markedly curious relatively young, with a letter from April 1834 describing him as tinkering with bell wires, deeply observing the flow of pond water into his home, and asking his mother to show him how everything worked, like doors and locks. It was expected that Maxwell would be taught at home until the age of 13, but after suffering from abdominal cancer, Maxwell's mother died in December of 1839, when Maxwell was just 8 years old. This led to him being taught by a 16-year-old tutor, who treated Maxwell rather harshly. John ended up dismissing the tutor in November of 1841, and it was decided that Maxwell would attend Edinburgh Academy. During the academic year, the family stayed at Maxwell's Aunt Isabella's home and stayed in Glenlair during the summers. Having been raised near isolation in Glenlair, Maxwell had trouble adjusting to the academy. His mannerisms and homemade wardrobe apparently made quite a negative impression on his peers, earning him the name Dafty. Though his peers weren't very nice to him, Maxwell eventually made lifetime friendships with Lewis Campbell, a 19th century Scottish classical scholar, notable for his works on Sophocles and Plato, and helping write the biography Life of James Clerk Maxwell, and Peter Guthrie Tate, a 19th century Scottish mathematical physicist, most notable for his work Treatise on Natural Philosophy, as well as his research in knot theory, which contributed to the formation of topology as a mathematical discipline. Tate described Maxwell initially as timid and boring, and the activities in which Maxwell took part were considered unintelligible by his peers. According to another classmate of his, one day Maxwell stood up to his peers with such energy that he was never bullied by them again, gradually gaining everyone's respect in the coming years, going on to win prize after prize in school contests, including a mathematical medal and first place for both English and poetry. In early 1846, at the age of 14, Maxwell wrote his first mathematical paper entitled On the Description of Oval Curves and Those Having a Plurality of Foci in which he generalized the definition of an ellipse and defined curves where there are more than two foci. The ideas had already been worked out by the likes of Descartes, but Maxwell simplified the construction. Being a tremendous work from a 14-year-old, the work was read to the Royal Society of Edinburgh on April 6, 1846. In 1847, Maxwell began attending the University of Edinburgh. According to Joseph John Thompson, who wrote on Maxwell, Maxwell interacted frequently with the most esteemed intellectuals at the University of Edinburgh. They found him shy, strange, quite socially awkward, which would be a trend for his entire life, but nonetheless recognized how remarkable his abilities were. 
people also found it difficult to follow Maxwell's line of thinking when interacting, as his immense creativity would cause him to jump from one subject to another before an idea could be properly digested by his recipient. In November of 1847, Maxwell was enrolled in three courses that would greatly influence him. A mathematics course lectured by Philip Kelland, a 19th century English mathematician notable for his work on heat, light, and water waves. A physics course taught by James David Forbes, a 19th century Scottish physicist notable for his work on the conduction of heat and inventing the colored spinning top. And a logic course taught by William Sterling Hamilton, a 19th century Scottish logician notable for being among the first Scottish logicians to create the algebra of logic, introducing the quantification of the predicate. Forbes was especially impactful, seeming to have really motivated Maxwell's potent interest in the nature and perception of color. Despite all the work these classes provided, Maxwell didn't find the coursework that demanding, thus giving him plenty of time to throw himself into experimental work, especially in Glenlair. Through his experiments, which Forbes highly encouraged by giving Maxwell free use of any physics instruments Forbes had procured, Maxwell discovered photoelasticity, independent of its first discovery by David Brewster, and he produced two papers that were published in the Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society of Edinburgh. The Theory of Rolling Curves, read in February of 1849, and The Equilibrium of Elastic Solids, read in February of 1850. In October of 1850, Maxwell began attending Peterhouse, Cambridge, but moved to Trinity College after his first term, as he believed it would be easier to receive a fellowship in the future. In November of 1851, Maxwell studied under William Hopkins, a 19th century English mathematician, who would become notable for his influence on great mathematicians, being coined the Senior Wrangler Maker, a wrangler being a student who gains first class honor in their final year of Cambridge's undergraduate mathematics program. Maxwell ended up getting the place of second wrangler in 1854, just behind 19th century English mathematician Edward Ruth, notable for systematizing the mathematical theory of mechanics and planting important seeds for modern control systems theory. Shortly after receiving his degree, Maxwell read his paper on the transformation of surfaces by bending to the Cambridge Philosophical Society, one of the few purely mathematical papers he'd written emphasizing his growth as a mathematician. After spending years at Trinity College, Maxwell wished to stay and apply to a fellowship he figured would take years. He continued to research and provided tutoring to supplement his income while he waited on the fellowship verdict. In March of 1855, Maxwell read a paper of his to the Royal Society of Edinburgh titled Experiments on Color, which laid out the principles of color combination. In the work, he was able to demonstrate that white light would result from a mixture of red, green, and blue light. In October 1855, Maxwell was made a fellow at Trinity College far sooner than he'd expected. In early 1856, Maxwell's father grew ill, and he wished to spend more time with his father. Forbes urged Maxwell to apply for the chair of natural philosophy at Marischal College of Aberdeen. During Easter vacation, Maxwell spent time with his father in Glenlair, who ended up dying on April 3, 1856. Maxwell mourned and returned to Cambridge as he intended, but shortly after returning, he was informed that he'd gotten the post at Marischal College and moved to Aberdeen in November of 1856. For the academic year, Maxwell stayed with his cousin in Aberdeen. His cousin was William Dice Kay, a Scottish engineer notable for being the main contributor to work done on Aberdeen Harbor in the late 19th century. Outside of the academic year, Maxwell spent his time in Glenlair at the home he inherited from his late father. Since Maxwell was the chair of natural philosophy, he had to take on other responsibilities outside of his research, like constructing syllabi, as well as preparing and giving lectures, of which he committed 15 hours a week to, including a free lecture to a local college. When Maxwell was able to focus on research, he devoted his attention toward the motion of Saturn's rings. This was the subject of the Adams Prize announced in 1857 by St. John's College of Cambridge, and Maxwell was immediately drawn in. Him and Tate had previously studied the problem in the late 1840s, so Maxwell had a head start. He submitted his essay on the subject two years later, entitled On the Stability of the Motion of Saturn's Rings, being the only one to have enough headway on the topic to actually be able to submit. In the essay, he showed mathematically that stability could only be achieved if the rings consisted of numerous solid particles, which wasn't confirmed officially until the Voyager spacecraft's journey in the early 1980s. 
He was awarded 130 quid for the essay, and the quality of the essay was hailed by George Biddle Airy, a 19th century English mathematician and astronomer notable for his research on planetary orbits, which included measuring the mean density of the Earth. In 1857, Maxwell became friends with the principal of Marischal, the Reverend Daniel Dewar. Soon after meeting Dewar, Maxwell met Dewar's daughter, Catherine Mary, who was seven years older than Maxwell. Love struck, and the pair were engaged in February of 1858, marrying in June of that same year. Catherine often helped in Maxwell's lab, and did experiments herself on viscosity. In 1859, Forbes moved from the University of Edinburgh to the University of St. Andrews, leaving the chair of natural philosophy vacant. Both Maxwell and Tate hopped on the opportunity and applied to the position. Ultimately, Tate was chosen, as he was claimed to be better suited to teach students who had more academic struggles. John Ambrose Fleming, a 19th and 20th century electrical engineer and physicist notable for inventing the first vacuum tube and establishing the right-hand rule, expressed that Maxwell's teaching could be kind of hard to follow, that it was often obscure, and he had a paradoxical and elusive way of speaking. However, George Gabriel Stokes, a 19th century Irish-English physicist and mathematician notable for his contributions to fluid mechanics, including the Navier-Stokes equations, expressed that Maxwell gave surprisingly clear explanations after attending one of his geometry lectures. In 1860, Marischal College merged with King's College of Aberdeen to become the University of Aberdeen. This led to Maxwell being laid off, but fortunately, he was able to take up the chair of natural philosophy at King's College of London. And so later that year, Maxwell and Catherine moved to London after recovering from a near-fatal bout of smallpox. The post at King's College was more demanding than that of Aberdeen, being required to lecture nine months out of the year, including evening lectures to artisans. Despite this, Maxwell did some of his most important work at King's College. In 1861, Maxwell published a four-part paper titled On Physical Lines of Force, influenced by a paper he'd written and read to the Cambridge Philosophical Society in 1855 called On Faraday's Lines of Force. This 1861 work was revolutionary in classical electrodynamics and helped tremendously with developing vector calculus. It is considered to be one of the most historically significant publications in physics, regarded as up there with Newton's Principia Mathematica. Within the work, Maxwell derived his famous equations of electromagnetism, coined now as Maxwell's equations, which are a set of 20 partial differential equations that describe how electric and magnetic fields propagate, interact, and are influenced by objects. Oliver Heaviside, a 19th and 20th century English mathematician and physicist, notable for bringing complex numbers into circuit analysis and independently developing vector calculus, rewrote 12 of the 20 equations into the four equations that are best known today. It must be noted that it's easier to modify from the original 20 equations to be compatible with quantum mechanics. Besides Maxwell's equations, the work also calculated that the speed of propagation of an electromagnetic field is approximately that of the speed of light, proposing that the phenomena of light is therefore an electromagnetic phenomenon, which Maxwell further expanded upon in his 1864 paper, A Dynamical Theory of the Electromagnetic Field. At another point in 1861, Maxwell gave a lecture on color theory to the Royal Institution of London, providing the world's first demonstration of color photography. Thomas Sutton, the inventor of the single-lens reflex camera, took the photo, photographing a tartan ribbon three times through red, green, and blue filters. There was a fourth photo taken through a yellow filter, but this was not used in the demonstration. The experiment was far from perfect, as Sutton's photo plates were insensitive to red and barely sensitive to green, but was nonetheless a remarkable push in the right direction. In 1865, Maxwell left King's College to live on his estate in Glenlair with Catherine, where he continued to produce high-quality work. He occasionally traveled to Cambridge, but mostly wished to stay back in Glenlair. In 1866, Maxwell continued to work on the kinetic theory of gases that he begun while in Aberdeen. He treated gases statistically, which in turn developed statistical mechanics, showing that temperatures and heat involved only molecular movement, that molecules at a high temperature have a high probability of moving toward those at low temperatures, but is not guaranteed. The theory today is coined the Maxwell-Boltzmann kinetic theory of gases. In 1871, Maxwell wrote a textbook leveraging much of the 1866 work, and then some, titled Theory of Heat, as well as showing the first explicit use of dimensional analysis, 
a system he'd proposed while at King's College. Later in 1871, Maxwell reluctantly accepted an offer from Cambridge to be the first Cavendish professor of physics, designing the Cavendish lab named after Henry Cavendish, who was a primarily 18th century scientist notable for discovering hydrogen. Maxwell also helped set up the lab, and it was formally opened in June of 1874. From 1874 to 1879, Maxwell edited Cavendish's papers, which consisted of rummaging through and repeating experiments from Cavendish's two published papers and 20 packages of manuscripts, consisting of mathematical and experimental electricity research. What resulted from these efforts was the work The Electrical Researches of the Honorable Henry Cavendish, published by Maxwell in 1879. In April of 1879, Maxwell began to have difficulty swallowing, the first symptom of his abdominal cancer. In May of 1879, Maxwell was well enough to give one final lecture, Fleming commenting how surprisingly lucid Maxwell was for someone who was dying. Him and Catherine returned to Glenlair that summer, both ill. Maxwell's health continued to plummet, but despite the pain he suffered, he still appeared cheerful through it all. In October of 1879, Maxwell and Catherine returned to Cambridge, Maxwell now barely able to walk. He died about a month later on November 5th, 1879, his doctor commenting that he'd never seen someone die more consciously and more calmly. Maxwell was buried at Parton Kirk near Castle Douglas. Well, there you have it. Another brief history of a remarkable mathematician. We'll end on a quote from Carl Sagan, a 20th century American planetary physicist notable for his research on extraterrestrial life. The equations were to represent nature, and nature is, Maxwell believed, beautiful and elegant. This essentially aesthetic judgment by a nerdish physicist, entirely unknown except to a few other academic scientists, has done more to shape our civilization than any ten recent presidents and prime ministers. If you enjoyed the video, please click that like button and subscribe. And if you generally just enjoy the content of this channel, please consider supporting on Patreon. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.